staying safe in the mountains. There is a specific forecast for almost every hill and mountain top across the UK. Using AI to combat climate change. People talk about the data lake and swimming in the data lake to explore what might be there. And after the storms, a period of relative calm. Temperatures, particularly in the southwest, should get up to double digits, if not a little higher. It's Friday, the 10th of December, and you're listening to Weather Snap from the Met Office. Hello, I'm Claire Nazir, and this is Weather Snap, an insider's guide to the week's weather headlines. With two named storms in quick succession, most parts of the UK have experienced some pretty extreme weather in recent weeks. For those living in hills and mountain areas, conditions have been especially challenging. So how best to follow changing conditions and stay prepared? Talking from our Aberdeen office, here's senior meteorologist Robin Steele. We're basically looking at all the sort of hills and mountains across the UK. So it's 10 areas in total. So anywhere from the sort of northwest highlands down through the sort of lake districts, down to the Brecon Beacons and across to the Mourns in Northern Ireland. Our mountains may not be the highest in the world, but certainly they get tested in every direction when it comes to extreme weather. Mountain weather obviously over the globe can change so quickly, but I think UK mountain weather <laughs> might be particularly changeable because we have such mobility around the UK with the weather systems. Um, but our hills and mountains are really very popular through the UK. So the main thing, as I was saying, and the thing where is probably visibility all season, you know, people getting caught out because uh, one minute they can see 30, 40 miles, the next minute they're in uh, hill fog. The last few weeks are obviously have been very busy for you. We've had two significant storms. There have been some significant snowfalls, particularly across Scotland and Pennines. At this time of year, when the air tends to go from really cold to milder conditions, does that come with its own risks and hazards? Yeah, I mean, obviously, snow in general, I mean, it, often you'll get that combined with, uh, you know, very strong winds. And also you're looking at low temperatures and, uh, you know, the hazards we'd be looking at there would be, you know, extreme or severe wind chill, blizzard conditions. Technically, you get white out, which basically means that you can't see where you're going. So if you can't see where you're going, it's obviously very hazardous over the mountains um, on there. So that's the kind of conditions that, that, that we have been experiencing recently. And are we in the season now for avalanches or does that tend to be later on in the winter season? Yeah, interestingly enough, I mean, normally the, the avalanche season would uh, generally sort of kick off around about the middle of uh, December. But there's been really good signals really from probably around about the, the end of uh, November that, that we are going into a, a sort of colder phase. So we did speak to our partners who do the avalanche forecast. That is done by the, the Scottish Avalanche Information Service. Um, they did bring that service uh, forward. So that now is up and running. And there is a, a page on the website where the mountain forecast is issued. If you were looking for it, you would just go to the Met Office website and then it comes under specialist forecasts. There is specific forecasts for almost every hill and mountain top uh, across the UK that you would have access to. So you could actually do like Ben Nevis or Hell Velen or, or, or whatever. And it covers all the sort of hazards you would expect. So it's like gales, storm, blizzards, uh, heavy rain, even sunshine's in there because obviously it can be a hazard in the high summer with high temperatures and dehydration and uh, uh, snow glare in the winter if there's a lot of snow around. Senior meteorologist Robin Steele. And as Robin said, the Met Office provides a comprehensive set of forecasts for hills and mountains throughout the UK, as well as advice on specific hazards. They're well worth a look and you can find them at metoffice.gov.uk forward slash weather forward slash specialist dash forecasts. Next week, an online conference will look at how artificial intelligence can be used to provide a better understanding of the impacts of climate change and help us achieve net zero targets. The conference is part of a wider collaboration between the Met Office and Exeter University, known as the Joint Centre for Excellence in Environmental Intelligence. 
To find out more the role AI can play in understanding climate impacts, I spoke to Met Office Chief Scientist, Professor Stephen Belcher. We're at a major turning point in history, right? So we acknowledge that the climate's changing. Our leaders are beginning to make progress, as we saw in COP early in November, to make the changes we need. But this needs to be underpinned by evidence. And technology will help us solve problems that were previously intractable. So environmental intelligence is to take environmental data, use the artificial intelligence on it, and enable us to make smarter solutions. Examples might be around health impacts of climate change. We know that heat waves are already longer and more severe than they used to be. And we know there are health impacts on those. But to really quantify those, we need to understand what are the vulnerabilities of people to hot weather? How hot does it get and who does it affect? The Met Office has always been a a data science organisation. So the scientists are very comfortable in this world. But for a lot of people, artificial intelligence is something which is future. But the Met Office is utilising all of these skills right now. The Met Office, of course, has always been a data organisation. We were one of the first adopters of supercomputers to produce our weather forecasts uh, 50 odd years ago. I think the change now is really the scale of the data that we're getting. We're talking about enormous volumes of data. People talk about the data lake and swimming in the data lake to explore what might be there. I think this is the real transformative change, the volumes of data. And then secondly, the power of computers to really interrogate that data and draw out of it new insights that simply wouldn't be possible if it was done by a human. And one of the key benefits, obviously, is that it saves a lot of time and energy. It would be impossible for a human to trawl through the data and see the relationships that might be there. As I say, going back to my example of health and heat, who are those vulnerable people? We couldn't possibly go through all the medical records of the population of the UK and pinpoint where they are right now when the heat wave's happening. But a big, powerful computer has a hope of doing that in a way that's quick enough to actually alert people and suggest they may want to make some adjustments to their lives. So it's the second annual Environment Intelligence Conference taking place. What's happening and who will be there? Well, one of the real goals of the conference is to establish this new area of environmental intelligence and build a community who actually are thinking about it. It's a new subject, bringing together environmental sciences with artificial intelligence. So we've got some really great speakers from the artificial intelligence community who perhaps aren't traditionally thinking about environmental problems, coming from the construction industry, from hardcore mathematics who design the AI algorithms, from the energy sector. So bringing them together with the expertise we've got at the Met Office and the University in Environmental Sciences is a real key goal here. So what we're talking about here is perhaps fresh new roads for climate science, which is far more interdisciplinary and far more about application, isn't it? It's mitigation, it's adaptation, it's heading to net zero. Yeah, absolutely correct. So the first problem that confronted climate scientists was, is the climate changing? And if it is, is it due to greenhouse gases? And we've really nailed those questions now. And I think this was recognised at the Paris COP in 2015. So now it's much more about solutions. What are those clean energy sources? Um, We know that lots of it's renewable. Renewable energy has a weather dependence, so the demand and supply depends on the work of the Met Office. Balancing that out is a huge data problem. So what we're doing through the Joint Centre is working with academics at the University of Exeter who have got expertise in healthcare, in energy systems, in agriculture, to really draw their experience in to form these huge multidisciplinary teams that we're going to need to build these AI tools that we've been talking about. Professor Stephen Belcher. And the Environmental Intelligence Conference runs from the 16th to 17th of December. To sign up or find out more details of the event, visit jceei.org. It's not just the UK that's been on the receiving end of stormy weather. The southwest of France and northern Spain have been overwhelmed by heavy rain and snowfall over the Pyrenees. The amount of precipitation that has fallen this week is equivalent to the entire December average and this comes after a very wet spell in recent weeks. Widespread flooding has been reported. 
and the region remains on orange alert for further impacts. The Pyrenees has also been placed under an orange avalanche warning, with the combination of heavy rain and rising temperatures making snowslides more likely. So that's northern Iberia. What can we expect weather-wise here in the UK over the next few days? Here's Alex Deacon. First of all, let's deal with Friday night because under largely clear skies, it's going to turn quite cold with uh, pockets of frost. And in the east, it'll stay cold. But actually further west, temperatures should start to tick up again by dawn because there's an approaching warm front. As for the weather on Saturday, well, that warm front will bring cloud and rain in from the west. So starting off damp across Northern Ireland, that rain spreading across Scotland, a bit of snow on the hills, but mostly it will be rain. And then that rain spreading from west to east across England and Wales. Now, the easternmost parts of England probably not seeing that rain until very late in the afternoon, if not through the evening. So for East Anglia, generally a dry day on Saturday, but it will be cold in the east because we're starting off around freezing. And then that cloud's going to spill in, so we're not going to get much sunshine. For the west, we'll have outbreaks of rain on and off. The breeze will pick up. But eventually, temperatures, particularly in the southwest, should get up to double digits, if not a little higher. Saturday night's then quite mild, but there will be more rain across the south, particularly the southeast, where it could be quite heavy before gradually easing. Further north, clearer skies should allow temperatures to drop away a little bit. But it does mean that across the north... Sunday looking like a bright, dry day by and large with some decent spells of sunshine across Scotland, Northern Ireland, parts of Northern England. Further south likely to stay fairly grey on Sunday, but apart from a bit of patchy rain, mostly dry. It will be mild in the south on Sunday. Temperatures again, double digits, perhaps even into the teens. But on Sunday night, we are a bit concerned about developments out in the Atlantic. An area of low pressure is going to really intensify, heading up towards Northern Ireland, but then really picking up as it gets a little further north. And as it gets close to Scotland, it could generate some very powerful winds. So this is Sunday night. The Western Isles in particular bearing the brunt of the strong gusts, 80 to 90 miles an hour possible, maybe even a little bit more than that for a time overnight. And that transfers to the Northern Isles through the early hours and into the first part of Monday. So those kind of winds likely to cause some structural damage and the potential for disruption to transports. There is a yellow warning in place. That's something we need to keep a close eye on over the course of the weekend. Very strong winds in the northwest on Sunday night. But other than that, into next week, the weather looking fairly changeable. Now with a quick look at last week's highs and lows, Martin Bowles. Here are the UK weather extremes for the week beginning Monday the 29th of November. The highest temperature of the week was 14.0 degrees Celsius at Rill on the north coast of Wales on Tuesday. The lowest temperature was on Monday morning when minus 8.7 Celsius was measured at Shap in Cumbria. This value was particularly low as a result of extensive lying snow in the area from Storm Arwen on the previous Saturday. The largest daily rainfall total was 39.4 mm at Capel Keurig in Snowdonia National Park in North Wales. The sunniest place was in Exmoor National Park on Sunday. 7.3 hours was recorded at Liscombe in Somerset. Thanks Martin. Well, if the winter weather is getting you down, maybe you're just thinking about it in the wrong way. In the latest episode of our sister podcast series, Mostly Weather, the team discussed the effects of weather on mood. There was a really fascinating study. It was a part of Norway where they have what's called polar nights that last all winter. And... The results of the study pointed towards what was termed a winter mindset. So rather than thinking about winter as something to endure and get through, as we often do in the UK, it's about looking forward to all the positives, looking forward to things like the snow arriving in in Norway, the skiing season, the northern lights becoming much more likely and visible and those cosy evenings by the fire with a hot chocolate. You can hear that full episode of Mostly Weather by visiting the Met Office channel at soundcloud.com or the audio playlist on our main YouTube weather channel. That's it for Weathersnap. I'm Claire Nazir. Editor is Adrian Holloway. Weathersnap is a podcast by the UK Met Office.
For the latest weather conditions where you are, download the Met Office Weather app.